Some people think zero raised to power zero is zero, because if we multiply zero with zero any number of times, the result must be zero. That's one side of the argument, and it sounds reasonable. Then, many people think that zero raised to power zero is one because any number raised to power zero is one, so they treat zero as just another base. But this is where things get messy. If we blindly follow the rule that anything raised to power zero is one, then we are ignoring the fact that the base is also zero, which itself behaves very differently. This clash of two different rules, one saying the power is zero, so the result is one, and the other saying the base is zero, so the result must vanish, leads to confusion. And in mathematics, when we get such conflicting behaviors, we call the result undefined. So zero raised to power zero is actually not clearly zero or one. It doesn't have a fixed value. It depends on the context, and that's why many mathematicians just call it undefined. Now, when you open a calculator designed by none other than engineers from Google or, say, the calculator made by Desmos, which is trusted by millions of students and teachers, and put the value zero raised to zero in it, it says, the answer is one and not undefined. Wait, what? How can such serious calculators just go ahead and confidently say it's one? Are they ignoring the mathematical confusion? But that cannot be the case, because obviously, we cannot ignore the fact that they have the brightest mind in their team, and thus, there must be a reason behind it. Well, the truth is, in the world of computers and programming, defining zero raised to zero as one actually makes many formulas work more smoothly. Like in calculus, combinatorics, or binomial expansion where expressions like x raised to zero or zero raised to zero pop up, assuming the result to be one just helps the entire formula stay neat and behave well. For example, the function e raised to x is defined using an infinite series that starts from n equals zero and goes till infinity of x raised to n divided by n factorial. So in short, e raised to x is x raised to zero divided by zero factorial plus x raised to one divided by one factorial plus x raised to two divided by two factorial and so on. Now if we put x as zero in this expression, the first term becomes zero raised to zero divided by zero factorial. The second term becomes zero raised to one divided by one factorial. The third term becomes zero raised to two divided by two factorial, and so on. All terms after the first become zero, because zero raised to any positive number is zero. So we are left with only one term, zero raised to zero divided by zero factorial. Zero factorial is one, and e raised to zero equals one. Therefore, we must assume that zero raised to zero is one. Otherwise, the formula fails right at the beginning. So it's not like the calculator is right or wrong, it's just that in some places, defining it as one is more convenient. But deep down, in pure maths, where precision and logic matter more than convenience, zero raised to zero is still undefined because it just doesn't settle into one clear answer.